Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com. We're coming to you live from Abu Dhabi at the Heart Valve Society Conference. Thrilled to be here with Dr. Mark Gilinoff, who's the chairman or chief of cardiac surgery at the Cleveland Clinic yes. in Cl uh, Cleveland, Ohio. He has been an incredible supporter of our website since, geez, Mark, I, I'm guessing 2008, 2009. Since you started it. Yeah, so I want to thank you for all your support of the patients out there. He's done thousands of heart valve procedures, and I can't think of a better person to ask, answer some questions that have come in about the ejection fraction. And this question, Mark, comes in from Sherry, and she, she's got a, a series of questions here. Maybe we just do them one at a time. She sure. says... Sherry asks, my questions are related to failing or falling ejection rates after surgery. What causes a major reduction in ejection fraction rates for some patients who have undergone mitral valve surgery? When you measure the ejection fraction and the mitral valve leaks, you get an artificially elevated number. When somebody has a leaking mitral valve, we say a normal ejection fraction in that setting is 65%. Whereas a normal ejection fraction when your valve doesn't leak is 50 or 55. Why is that? The ejection fraction is simply a measure of how much blood does the ventricle eject. It doesn't care which direction it goes. So if your mitral valve leaks, your left ventricle squeezes and it ejects more blood. Some of it goes backward though. That doesn't count, but you still get an artificially elevated number. When I fix the valve or we surgeons fix the valve, the ejection fraction now is the true ejection fraction which is generally gonna be around 50 or 55. Now, if somebody has waited too long to have mitral valve surgery and the ventricle is dilated, the ejection fraction may come out in the 30s or 40s. Wow, I, I never knew that in all the time that I've been doing that's fascinating. So then, this question that she's asking, can anything be done then to return the ejection uh, fraction rate to normal? If, if, you're, it's... if you're 50, 55, you're at normal. You're good to go. If somebody's ejection fraction falls below that, that usually indicates that the ventricle is already damaged or dilated, and then we would treat with medicines that help remodel the ventricle, like ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, for six to nine months. Mm -hmm. Many of those ventricles will remodel, but the key point is people who have a severe mitral regurgitation from mitral valve prolapse should just get surgery, don't wait. Got it. Um, and then she goes on to say, how long does it take, if you're using those uh, medications you referenced, for the ventricle to remodel? Six to nine months. But if somebody's waited long enough that the ventricle is already damaged, in some cases it never gets back to normal. Got it. And the last question she says, she asks is, how prevalent is this condition? <clears throat> When people get early surgery for severe mitral regurgitation, it uh, very rarely happens. It really depends on when people are referred. So amongst those who are referred a little bit late, they have ventricular dilatation, they have ventricular dysfunction, they have a lot of symptoms, it's more common. Got it. <clears throat> well, Sherry, I hope that helps you and the other folks who wrote in about the ejection fraction. And Mark, thanks again for being with us oh. and all your incredible support.